welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am finishing my staycation, which has not gone like I planned at all, but has ended up being really nice. In some aspects, we got the some of the family drama kind of wrapped up, which, and then I started to get other things done that I've been putting off. So, you know, it's been, so it's felt like a very productive week for me. And then I also got to do a lot of reading, which makes me happy. So we're going to jump right into that. Okay, so my reading wrap up. This was a great week for me. I finished seven things, which, wow. I entered April in a bit of a reading slump and I was worried. To start off with, I finished Delicious in the Dungeon, volume seven, which happens to be on my reading challenge for read a book that was published in 2000 and 2023. It's one book a year. So this was one of mine. So that completes that one. And this is continuing on with the adventuring party as they are going further into the dungeon trying to find a way to confront the lunatic magician that has created it and save Fallon again. I can't really go into much more detail because it, it's book seven. You, you just, it is fun. I then finished Reaper by Elliot Pepper. This is one of our self-published science fiction contest semi-finalist reads, and this is a near future thriller. So you get to see how science has progressed a little bit farther at the same time as you have a thriller going on. I'm not much of a thriller reader myself, but I really loved the technology and science aspects of it and how those interplayed with the thriller was really cool. So I ended up actually really enjoying this book and I have a single review coming out for it here shortly. I then finished Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is a reread for me after we watched all the movies and just fun getting back into that world. We are now going to see if my husband is going to pick it up because he has not read any of these and I did tell him that pretty much with the first book he'd know if he wanted to read further or not. Then I received, as part of my Easter basket from my mom, the book Sex Talks by Vanessa and Xander Marin. This is a book I heard about from Margaret Prenard, and this is like a nonfiction self-help book, and it's about having conversations about sex with your partner. It, it's all about communication and how to communicate better so that you guys can enjoy having sex with one another. From Margaret's description, I was really interested in picking this up because my writing goal for April was to work on plotting out a romance, and I thought that this would be helpful. And I do think that this is actually very helpful, especially for more contemporary romances where we see that we want more consent, we want more conversation. And I think that's just the trend in romance going forward anyway. And I really enjoyed it. It was a, yeah, I have outlined and made notes all over this book. So the only other person who gets to read this specific copy will be my husband. And if you're interested in hearing more about this book, I'm going to link Margaret's review. She did a single review for this. And yeah, it was just a really, really fun read. In fact, like, before my mother actually gave me the book that she bought for me, she read it and then it led to conversations with my between her and my father. And I've been talking about my husband. He's been enjoying the conversations. And then my college roommate, we gifted her a copy. So this is a lot of fun, especially if you like communication, self-help kind of books. Side note, I forgot to say. Sex Talks also works as a prompt for my public health readathon for the trends in women's health, because it's healthy to talk about sex with your partner. 
I then read I Never Liked You Anyway by Jordan Corella, and this is a novella that was nominated for the Nebulas, and I had never heard of it before then, which is one of the reasons why I like the Nebulas. There's always at least one book or novella on there that I've never heard of that the in, you know authors in the industry have and really enjoyed. So I got to read this, and this is a retelling of Orpheus and Eurydice, which was a Greek myth that I hadn't known anything about. I had to go look it up halfway through the book when I realized, oh, th this is based off of something. But this is more of a contemporary look, and it is from Eurydice's point of view after she is dead. It's a lot of fun. I then read Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I had tried picking this up the other week, and I bounced off of it. So after reading all these other books, I tried it again and ended up reading it in one day. It's not a very long novel, and I would call this more of like a dark fairy tale. So if you like the older fairy tales where here the story doesn't come out unscathed, I think that this would be up your alley. But this follows a older woman, she's in her 30s, who finds out her sister is being abused by her husband and then sets out to kill him to save her sister has some interesting dynamics about how, you know, how family actually feels about one another, even if they don't have the best interactions with them. Nettle and Bone worked, or finished my book on your highest shelf, which is because it's my library shelf for the magical readathon. And then the last thing I finished was Delicious in the Dungeon, volume eight. And this one, I think, and this one I think might be my least favorite out of the eight volumes that I have read so far. This pulled away more from the main group and focused on some side characters that we have met along the way and their interactions with the dungeon. And then when we were with the main group, it felt just more like, oh, hey, I don't want you to forget about them. Not moving a lot of plot along with the main group, I didn't care about these side characters as much. I'm not invested in them yet. So not as interested in this volume. Book, you know, eight, I started with a snack. So still really wanting to read more of the series. I'm enjoying the series. For what I'm currently reading, I have picked up Light Blade by Zamil Akhtar again, and I've continued to read further. And not, I'm still not very far into the book. I think maybe I'm like 13% in because it's an audiobook. No, not audio, because it's an ebook. The main character is having some memory loss issues, and amnesia is not a favorite trope of mine. So I'm just kind of right now waiting to see how this is going to play out before I continue further, if that makes sense. And then after finishing Harry, the first Harry Potter, I picked up the second one. As you can see, this is. A badly beaten up book. Uh, this is one of you know the original hardbacks and we loaned it to a neighbor, this one and number three, and when we got it back it was both books were damaged. This one pages were falling out as you can see. <laughs> and then the other one had been chewed to death. So I don't have actually the uh, number three. I had to get that one from the library. And I'm just reading when I can, as I can, out of book two. Kind of like my read before going to bed when I just want to chill. They're really great for not thinking and getting these rereads. And then I've also picked up Who Gets the Drumstick by Helen North Beardsley. This is the book that inspired the movies Yours, Mine, and Ours. The first movie being a little bit closer to the book. It, this is a reread for me. It's just kind of feeling like something more wholesome and heartwarming. I'll probably finish this this weekend. It's not very long. Just going to slow read um, book number two, and I'm not sure what I'm picking up next week for, or even this weekend for other reads. And I'll continue Light Blade, see how I feel about that one. <laughs> going to skip the writing wrap up because I this week haven't done anything haven't I'm taken a break and going into my other media where I have been watching more of midsummer murders just 
getting, I'm, I'm still in ones that I remember. So I guess I was further along than I thought on the seasons, but it's been fun still to rewatch them. Forget how long of a time slot that these are. So I don't watch them always right at one after the other. I'm just thinking about like, yeah, I haven't really watched anything else. So. So coming up, I will have the review for Reaper coming up hopefully shortly after this goes up. It's filmed. It just needs to be edited and uploaded. I'm not sure what else is going to be in the future. So I am still working on reading the novelettes. I have one more novella left and then the novels that have been no nominated for the Nebulas. So I'm doing that. Still have the original books that I chose for the Public Health Readathon to read. So I have one more Magical Readathon prompt to finish and I'm not sure what that's going to be since that's a between a specific page count. This has been my week. I love all the reading I'm doing and love staycations. Getting to relax, getting to put things in order. Yeah, definitely needed this because I was burned out. I have the question for you. Do you guys do staycations? Or do you prefer actually going on a vacation somewhere? And then what do you like to do as part of your self-care? I'd love to know. Thank you and have a great day.